So I've been getting my bike parts from AliExpress for years at this point. Now, admittedly, there, there is quite, quite a lot of trash on there, but there are also some hidden gems to be found. And here are five of those that I use all the time. My name, as always, is Luke, and welcome back to Trace Velo. Now, as it happens, I actually do uh, loads of cycling in like pitch black conditions uh, in, the, in the dead of night, basically. So I've tried loads of different bike lights in my time. This one here I've had for over two years. It is the best one I've ever used. It is compact, bright, long lasting, totally waterproof and rechargeable. It mounts onto regular cylindrical handlebars with this included mount, but it also comes with a GoPro fitting. So attaches to a lot of the Garmin mounts that I use with my integrated handlebars. The runtime is fantastic. Flashing, it will do over 15 hours and it has four different levels of brightness with the brightest at 800 lumens. And I've put the different runtimes for the brightness levels on screen as well. Now riding at night, I'm usually at a level two and almost never use level four on the brightness, especially with cars around. Depending on the angle, you, <laughs> you can actually easily blind the oncoming traffic, so you need to be a little bit careful. You can swap out the battery super easily for extended bike packing trips. The reflector keeps the light exactly where you need it on the road. It easily slides out of the mounts when you don't need it on the bike, and it can be mounted on top or underneath the bars. Now, I managed to buy mine for like 24 quid a few years back, but right now they go for around 30. Still a fantastic price. I, I literally cannot stress how much I recommend this bike light. Now, like a lot of you out there, I've dealt with a bit of knee pain on the bike over the years. Now, after a couple of bike fits and, and a lot of trial and error with my setup, I realized I had a bit of hip impingement which was affecting my kind of pedal stroke. One of the ways to address that is to increase the stance width, i.e. the distance between both pedals. Now there are a number of different ways to achieve this. Some adjustment can be made with the cleats on your shoes and you can even buy certain pedal systems with elongated axles fresh out of the box, but the latter can be quite an expensive option, especially if you've already bought yourself a decent set of pedals. So I opted to try some pedal extenders. Now, most of the pedal extenders that you come across add an extra 20 millimeters to the axle on each pedal. I got a set from Amazon, but after using them for a few weeks, I felt that I didn't really need that much. Plus they're steel. So after spending ages, you know, choosing a, choosing a super lightweight pedal, throwing an extra 50 or 60 grams on the bike was a bit frustrating. So I picked up these titanium alloy pedal extenders from a brand that's called themselves Risk for, a, for some reason. They come in a 16 millimeter version, which turned out to be perfect, and they weigh around half as much at about 25 grams for the pair. Now they only cost 15 quid, and I've bought a couple of sets now and used them on multiple bikes for thousands of miles without any trouble. Not a purchase for everyone, but if you need it, these are wicked. Now, if you run inner tubes, these are an absolute no-brainer, in my opinion. So a regular butyl rubber inner tube like this one here, 111 grams for this thing. The Ride Now inner tubes, they're stated to weigh 36 grams. This one here actually weighs 32 grams, but either way, these are less than one third of the weight. They are admittedly slightly more difficult to install and you do need to be careful not to pinch them against the rim when you fit them, especially when using tire levers. But once they're in, yeah, no problems. I find these TPU inner tubes lose air a little bit slower than regular ones and I found them to be slightly more pinch flat and puncture resistant as well. Now, if you do get a flat, Ride Now suggests using their special patch kit but yeah, I bought it and I couldn't get it to seal properly. So I slapped on one of these standard glueless patches. Yeah, totally sealed. Plus another massive benefit is they pack down really small. So great to carry spares in your pocket or in like a small saddlebag. In terms of the ride quality, TPU inner tubes are meant to lower the rolling resistance when compared to regular butyl rubber ones. So on paper, at least, it should save you like one or two watts. But I think the main benefit is gonna come in reducing the rotating mass around the very outside edge of the wheels. You could look to save about 150 grams over both wheels, and this is definitely gonna help make them feel a little bit faster as you're accelerating in the sprints. Now, you can usually buy a pack of two of these things for less than 15 quid. That's certainly what I've paid for them in the past, and considering the Turbolito version costs 30 quid for one on Wiggle, yeah, absolute no-brainer. 
Now, one thing I haven't actually tried, latex inner tubes. Now, I know loads of you out there absolutely swear by them, especially quite a lot of TT races, from what I understand. But yeah, if you think they're worth checking out, definitely let me know in the comments. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Much like my rapidly receding hairline, <laughs> spring has suddenly arrived, ladies and gentlemen. But luckily, today's beautiful sponsor, Sirocco, have got me covered. They're a cool little Spanish company that produced some fantastic cycle gear, and I wear their M4 long sleeve jersey out nearly every day. It looks really good, if you ask me, and it's made with some lovely Italian fabrics. The construction is really good too, so uses flat lock stitching throughout to create strong and flexible seams, and the pockets at the back are super deep to carry all your gear. It's basically perfect for those slightly more temperate days out on the bike, so sort of between 5 and 16 degrees C. But here's the trick, right? If you're heading out for an all-day ride and the weather looks a bit changeable, grab yourself some bib shorts and one of their short sleeve jerseys, like this one here, and pair with their arm and leg warmers. If it stays chilly, keep it all on. But once the sun comes out, you can pull the warmers off, fold them up, and sort of stick them in your back pockets. It's essentially my go-to move as we shift a little bit closer towards summer. But Sirocco do all sorts of gear for all weathers, and it's really good value stuff as well. I've been wearing it on every single ride for well over two years now. They're genuinely such a good sponsor to have on board. So if you did want to pick up some stuff, use my link in the description down below. Save yourself 10% off the entire site, and anything kind of bought through that link gives me a bit of kickback, helps me do what I'm doing around, around here, which is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Back to these AliExpress beauties. Okay, so if it is full on raining outside, I will use full shoe covers for my, for my cycle shoes here. And I've got them in here, yep. Yeah, just like this, so fully rubber shoe covers. Really good, keep your feet completely dry, but they're a massive pain to take on and off all the time. So if it's just drizzling outside, maybe just still a little bit wet on the ground, or even if I just wanna keep my feet a bit warmer in some chilly weather, I always go for toe covers. These Gaio toe covers are lightweight. I can leave them on my shoes. They don't look super ugly and keep the water spray and wind off, keeping your feet surprisingly warm. Often just keeping the wind out of these vents on the front of most cycle shoes is enough to keep your feet nice and toasty in cooler temperatures. You can get some cheap neoprene ones on eBay for a few quid, but they don't last long and they tend to let the water in. These Gaia ones are waterproof, have wear resistant fabric on the bottom, reinforced stitching, and are compatible with every cleat system I've thrown at them. They also look great and my set cost me seven quid for the pair. These are 18 months old and I still use them nearly every day and they look virtually brand new. A really good bit of kit. Now, everything else in this video I've bought myself, but full disclosure, IGP Sport sent this thing over for me to check out. So, for the last six or seven years, I've been using my Garmin 520. It's had two battery replacements. The, the rubber has holes in it, so it's not waterproof anymore. And the features are definitely lacking nowadays. The maps are rubbish, for example. So, for the last few months, I've been using this IGS 630. It is great, really great screen, super long battery life, 35 hours at the top end, eight gigabytes internal storage, so loads of space for maps and routes, and it is super full featured. I literally can't cover everything it does in this short video, but it connects to power meters, cadence meters, heart rate monitors, and electronic shifting as well. If you've got it, it is IPX7 water resistant. It syncs with Strava, has a really clear navigation, and virtually everything can be configured either on the companion app or on the device itself. It's really easy to see in direct sunlight or at the dead of night, and it's, it's not touchscreen, which is a massive win, in my opinion. Touchscreen bike computers are a pain, if you ask me, especially trying to use them in the rain with wet fingers. And I know you've been able to see this for ages on some of the higher spec Garmin units, but the way it shows your progress as you're heading up climbs is so useful. Definitely helps keep the morale up on some of those bigger climbs. But overall, really, really great. I haven't touched my Garmin since I got this thing, and it fits all the same Garmin mounts as well. Now, there are some quirks. So rather than rerouting, if you go off your set course, you get a beep and a red arrow pointing you back to the route, so you can kind of make your own way back. And the companion app can be a little clunky with the occasional mistranslation, but the price is pretty hard to contend with.
Now, interestingly, you can't actually get this particular model on AliExpress. Turns out the best place to buy them is actually Amazon, at least for the UK. Now, it currently goes for 200 quid, but they have been as low as 150. I'm working with IGP Sport, like <laughs> right now before I upload this, to try and wrangle you lot a discount. So if I manage to set it up, I'll pin the info in the top comment. It's the bonus clip time to do do. Right, one last bonus product, YBN chains. Easily some of the best bicycle chains that I've ever used. Great construction and materials, really hard wearing and fantastic shifting performance. Easily on par with some of the top offerings from Shimano and SRAM in my opinion. They aren't a massively well-known brand in UK and US markets, but their reputation is stellar. They're a Taiwanese company, been in the biz since 1989, and I heard a rumor they actually make the chains for Campagnolo. Prices are great too. I got my 12-speed chain for just under 17 quid. With taxes and delivery, it was under 20. The equivalent Shimano chain usually goes for about 30 quid, so not like mind-blowing on the savings, but still an excellent chain for a decent price. So there we are, a little bit of a rundown of some of my favorite buys on AliExpress. And it's actually my first video as a, uh, a full-time YouTube guy. Uh, so some of you will know, a little while back, I decided to give this a go full-time, and last Thursday was my last day at my regular job. So um, now begins the slow descent into lunacy, as I spend every waking hour in this small garage that is uh, adjacent to my toilet. <clears throat> Just been sort of looking at myself in the, in the viewfinder there. I've got a bit of a sort of 1995, your dad's taking you to Toys R Us kind of look. There's a magical place. Not, the, not the vibe I was necessarily going for. We're on, our way there. on a professional cycle channel. With toys in the millions. <laughs> All Anyway, if you did want to see me kind of make this a bit of an ongoing series, because I've got, well, I've got loads of other stuff that I can kind of feature in videos like this, then leave me a comment with some baguette emojis. And if the volume of baguettes that I witness is, is sufficient, your boy's going to make it happen. Um, anyway, that is all we've got time for. Subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Hit the like button if you uh, appreciate the outfit that I've got. And if you've got any, um, got any questions or comments for me uh, about any of the stuff that I've featured today, then uh, leave me a comment and I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can. <laughs> right, that's enough. See you next time, ciao.